Hey, this video is going to take uh, about 25 minutes, and this is an introduction to lighting and shading on the seven basic forms. On the little sheet here, you're going to see some reminders. You'll see the three basic shapes that you have, the triangle, rectangle, and the circle. You have the seven basic forms. You have cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, prism, pyramid, and the ribbon. And then over here you have the five value system. And this is kind of the big theme for this video, just the five value system. That's your one main takeaway. Um, so every time that you set up the page, you're gonna create these five little swatches. There's white, half tone, tone, core, and drop shadow. Um, we could say cast shadow as well instead of drop shadow, but it's easier to use Trap Shadow because the abbreviation is unique. Um, and then on the light side of an object, you're going to use White and Halftone. The dark side, you're going to use Tone, Core, and Drop Shadow. So we're just going to run through each of the seven basic forms in real time and do these uh, little bits of lighting. Okay. So if you're unsure of how to do these seven basic forms, go back and look at the seven basic form videos and get them a little bit more solid. So I like to begin by identifying where the core is going to be and immediately putting a tone on the dark side. And the point of the, the five value system is that as you lay these tones down, you're looking at your value chart and you can go right to the value that you need. Once I establish the tone, then I'll go in and establish the core. You can do this in any order. It's just this is the way that I do it. Um, notice too that I turn the paper uh, all the time. That's just to make it more comfortable for you to draw um, these lines. It, it helps if you draw away from you um, at a very comfortable angle. And the other thing that you'll notice is that I'm accessing the side of the pencil and I'm not just using the point. Um, if you're unsure of how to construct shadows, then look at the more technical uh, shadow construction videos that I have on the on the channel. We're trying to stay non-technical for this because this is probably your first time drawing and we don't want to overload with you know detailed and and technical information when really what you need to do is put the pencil to the paper. So here what we've done is we've laid out the tone, the core, and you see on the on the light side of the object there's a little bit of half tone and that's a really important thing because that that makes the white side the light side just turn around towards the core on the other side um, the other thing that you can do is you can use either tone or core lines to just bind the edge of the object here we're going to put in the drop shadow and you know the whole shadow area doesn't have to be perfectly black uh, perfectly dark you can you can go into core or even tone levels of value in this. Um, it's situation dependent. The other thing too is when you're drawing these forms, um, you always just use the same level of darkness for white, half tone, tone, core, and and the drop shadow. When you get into drawing objects, whether you draw a light or the or a dark object, it's the same. So when you start drawing objects together and you start putting scenes together, then you have you know, more to deal with in terms of changing all these tones. So here I'm using that core to go around and just find the edge of the object, make sure I have a good silhouette. I like to put a heavier core tone right where the shadow core goes on both sides of, of these cylinders. find that it looks kind of nice and emphasizes the front area of the object. And just for kicks, we're going to label everything. So we have the white, we have the core, we have the half tone, then we have the half tone again as it goes into the core. We have the tone side, which is the shadow side. We have the core right on the edge. And we have the drop on the shadow on the ground. So that's it for the cylinder. I like to start with the cylinder because it's very easily identifiable. And then your reminder about basic forms is that every cylinder is made up of the rectangle and the circle. And I like to write little equations.
for this, like it's math or something. Because you're always coming back to basic shapes. You always want to be able to, as you do something more advanced, be able to connect it back to more basic ideas. Okay? So here we go. On to the next thing. And what do we do? Every single page, every single time, especially since we're in beginning drawing, drawing one, we're always going to put that little five value swatch chart if we're doing any kind of object drawing with tone and value. Okay? It's just a good habit to get into, even as you progress into more advanced drawing, because it helps you go directly to the value that you need and keeps you honest about those values. Eventually, you may have it in your head and you just don't need it. Um, but when you're trying to learn, using these tools really helps. So when you turn these sort of projects in, you know, you should see this little chart on every single page. And I label them too. You don't have to, but I find it helps. And especially for the halftone, you really want to access the side of the pencil. All right. So let's see, what form should we do? Let's do uh, spheres because it's kind of the cliche rendering uh, thing, but it's also part of the seven basic forms. Um, so again, I like to just start with the tone side, identify the tone. The cool thing about this process too is you can come back at any point and work the outer edge and contour. You don't have to begin with a perfect contour. Um, a lot of people when they're starting out like to get the lines right. But you know, you don't have to spend all your time getting the lines right before you get to the value. You can lay a value down and then work the lines somewhere in the middle or end. Um, I had one teacher that really wanted us to do the lines at the very end and build everything up through value. Um, I think it's more painstaking and time consuming that way. So I like to get some, some value down and then right in kind of in the middle of the process, refine those lines. Of course, if you're drawing digitally, it doesn't matter what order because you can do it at any point in time. So here we've identified the tone, the core and the half tone all in one go. And, um, here I'm just deriving this shadow, those lines. They go right on the edge of the sphere, right where the core hits the outer edge. And then we're gonna hit that drop shadow. If you want a more technical um, video of that, there's one on the channel. So yeah. Just going to take the time to even out, even out those values. Then we need to come back and work that edge again. The other thing that you can do is use different line weights and darknesses around objects to emphasize the parts you want to emphasize. And again, um, you know, when you're drawing your objects, you know, you don't want, need to label them all the time. I'm just labeling them so that it's very clear what value goes where. Okay. So this all makes sense for curved objects, but what about straight objects? Um, so let's do a box form and we're going to do a three sided box so that we see the two sides and the top. There's different ways to draw boxes. They can be totally flat and just a shape. They can be two sides or three sides. And you should uh, see that from the box drawing videos that you should have already watched. If you haven't seen those, go back and watch them. All right, so that's your basic box. Main thing we look for in the box instruction is that, the, uh, that we're making triangles as we go out. Um, and that the lines converge to be triangular from that front and center line. And here we're just going to quickly 
uh, sketch in where the ground shadow is going to go. And I use the, basically the same angle of the top of the box to um, derive the shape of that shadow. So again, we're going to go right to the tone on the dark side. And, you know, one of the problems is most people want to stay too light in the beginning. So this chart is intended for you to look from your value that you just put down over to the chart and then say, is that dark enough? And if it's not, you add more, add more uh, value to it, get darker because we want to go right to it. We don't want to spend a lot of time sneaking up and edging on the value. That's not really, um, that's too time consuming, too annoying, and it's not really a good process for the modern age where you kind of need to speed up your drawing. Here. Now we're getting back into just defining some of those edges. Now on the light side, what I like to do is fade. So I'll start with a little bit of halftone and fade down to the white so that I differentiate all three sides. Um, but I also get this idea that there's light bouncing around and progressing. And it's basically like you're using a feather touch on the paper. You're not pressing very hard. And then on the shadow side too, I'll do the fade and use a little bit of the core tone and fade down to the tone. And this gets the idea that there's light bouncing up off the surface that the box is sitting on. and creating a little bit of a, of a transition. Then on the ground shadow, you just go for it, make it dark. And you can treat the edge of the shadow however you need to. It can be a soft edge, it can be a hard edge. It depends on the situation. If you get out a box and put a lamp on it, it may help you see these values a little bit better, but honestly, this is good practice because, um, you know, without a reference or anything, without looking at anything, we can kind of begin to invent these, these shapes and these forms. And, you know, drawing in the beginning and the end is, is a creative endeavor. It's what you want it to be. And a lot of you probably have the goal of doing maybe concept design or something like that and you want to be able to come up with stuff out of your head and this is basically how you do it you master these forms and then you're able to embellish them Okay. So that fading concept is what thing what makes things look real as if there's actual light bouncing around. Um, if everything's sort of perfectly flat, it doesn't look as realistic. So if that's the goal you want, realism, then remember how that works. So next we have to go into the to the cone. And this is gonna be are the end of our four basic basic forms. Um, you know, there's debate as to how many of these forms that you need to know. Um, whether it's four, five, six, seven, um, there's a whole bunch of variety of opinions on this. But I use seven because it kind of covers everything. Okay, so again, we're going to lay out these values. We're going to start with the tone side. And I'm going to do it a little bit different where there's more shadow in the object this time. All right. So that edge where we transition from light to dark is where the core is going to go. Since it's round, the core is not going to be very sharp. It's going to be a little bit soft. And you'll notice when you do shadow cores that 
there's a dark part of the core and lighter parts of the core. Here there's a teeny teeny halftone transition edge and a little bit of white. And then we just come back and we bind that edge, you know, make sure that it's very clearly identifiable. And then remember, I'm serious about it. Every single page, you do a little value chart, and it's going to keep you anchored. Taking this little bit of time to, to do this really, really helps, and it saves you time in the end because you're going to go right to the values you need every single time. It's also, when you're learning, it's also going to help you imprint this process into your head. And it's also good practice for just handling your materials. And what's cool is every time you switch materials, you do that little scale and it'll keep you set when you're exploring new materials. Okay, now we're on to the prism, or prismatic form. It's great because this one's, you know, this one's going to be how you're going to draw houses and a lot of buildings and architecture, ramps and things like that. This one's a little bit different because we're only going to see two sides of it. Um, we're not going to see three sides. You could draw it where you could see three sides, but we're not going to do it that way. So we're going to imagine light coming from the left, the upper left. We're going to do a little bit of that halftone transition fade that we did on the box form. Because again, it is a squared off form. It's got hard edges. Then we're going to go right to the tone on the shadow side. What's fun about this sort of thing is um, that this is prepping you to light very complex objects. If you can do this with these basic forms, you're going to have a lot easier time with, with objects and combining these forms together. Yeah, and we're training. You know, this is probably one of the first times you picked up a pencil with the intent to really learn to draw well. So we can uh, we can do a lot with it. As long as you stick to these basic ideas and just try one idea, one or, one or two ideas at a time, it's going to go well for you. Okay. So again, we're doing like a fade from chord to tone here, just like we did a fade from half tone to white. Now we're going to just quickly derive uh, a basic drop shadow based on where the edge of that tent is. Be a little bit lazy with this one because we've seen how this works a bunch of times. Just for clarity, again, labeling it, making sure you use all five of these tones in every little object. Okay, we have two more objects to get to. Um, the next one's going to be the pyramid. And the pyramid's basically your combination of triangles and, and your box form, because you kind of have a box the beginning of the box at the bottom of a pyramid and then you draw triangles upward from it to form the point. Um, again, we're going to do this one two-sided. You could do it three-sided where you see the, like if you're looking under the pyramid and you see the bottom of it, but um, I think it's good to practice both two and three-sided objects. Pyramid's really useful because a lot of um, machined things are made out of boxes and pyramids in combination. So, um, you'll want to 
have this one in your back pocket. And again, practice going right to the value that you need. Don't put a half tone where you need a tone. Okay. And then we're going to go chord to tone, kind of fading from the peak of the pyramid and down. And that's your basic object. I'm not going to put the drop shadow in uh, for the interest of time. You're un you kind of understand how this works. If you need technical explorations of constructing those those drop shadows, there's other there's other videos to watch on the channel. So now we need to do the ribbon, um, and the ribbon has so many varieties. But the simplest way to show you is just with this little S curve ribbon. If you need help on drawing ribbons there's a couple of videos on the channel that you can explore. So this one, um, it's very clear which side is light and dark because really it's just a plane. It's not necessarily a form um, because it has very obviously has two sides, a light and a dark side. So we're gonna go ahead and do uh, lighting from the left and put in a tone on the shadow side. We want to go right to the tone, make sure it gets dark enough, make sure it gets evened out and all the way to the edges. And then you notice that I kind of drew through the ribbon form. I do that a lot on ribbons um, because I need those lines really to, to meet up properly. Um, you can do that with any form. It just is a little bit more technical and it clutters up your line work a lot. making sure I'm getting down to the tone now. Again, I'm accessing the side of the pencil to spread that tone a little more evenly and to stay with the right pressure. Then, you know, I might need to find some edges here because as edges get lost, I might need to bring them back up. Because what we're going for is clarity. Everything needs to be clear from the very beginning to the very end. Then I think it's easiest with these to just go ahead and put a little bit of halftone transition as we go around these little curves, right? So every place that it curves, you need a little bit of halftone and some transition. See how that works? And it's kind of a wider halftone because the curve is very slow compared to the other objects. Now, when we go in to put the core, we know that we're having a long curve, so the core has to be very wide. Um, so we kind of have to fade this core over a larger area than we would if we're simply drawing a cylinder. Okay, This is kind of like combining the curved side of cylinders in different ways. And all these forms connect to each other conceptually. Um, and if you if you want, I can explain more of those connections and how they work. But I think, you know, a, a cylinder is basically like wrapping a ribbon all the way around in a circle. So the skills should transfer from one to the other. Okay, see how wide this core is? Goes for quite a while. Okay, and then we have to sneak in a core all the way on that back side too because the same transition is happening. And this is also a slow curve, so we do have to fade it out for quite some distance. And then we just go back in, clean up these lines, clean up the edges, and we have a pretty good ribbon form. And then we go back in and label, and everything should be clear. So this is about it for, for lighting these seven basic forms. So um, you want to practice this. Some forms you want just line work. Some forms you want to do lighting. Um, so do a bunch of these. Make sure that you're going for clarity and that you're stacking one more concept onto the other and paying attention to how all this works.